Three Count Thursday is sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to the website, arenaeats.app, that's arenaeats.app, for the ultimate fan experience. At your favorite sports venue, Arena Eats mobile app, pre-order, express pickup, and in-seat delivery. How do you place your order? The World Wrestling Federation. For over 50 years, the revolutionary force in sports entertainment. Oh, it's live, pal. We're really glad that you're our friend. And this is a friendship that'll never, ever end. Everybody three count. One, two, three. One, two, three. Or maybe The Rock has got to beat Triple H himself, which means uh, he's got to beat the game uh, in the middle of the ring. Uh, and he has a $2 s for a wife. Uh. You're too damn selfish, and that's why you're sitting there with a bad leg, and that's why I kicked your leg out of your leg. You guys talk about being students of the game. I am the f-ing game, JR. Three ain't enough now. I need five. Welcome in Jim, Ryan, Matt, Tim, and intern Mark. Oh Ta-da! my goodness, what do we do? There's a one. There's a two. Oh! oh, wow. Well, you can take that brass ring and shove it up your ass. What's going on, Three Count Thursday fans? Jim and Ryan with you again for another 3CT watch along. Ryan, how we doing? We doing all right? We're doing so good, Jim. Good, good. good. So good. How are you? I'm uh, I'm doing good uh, as we're recording this on a... Mic check. Mic check. I can hear you. I, you're good. We're all good. We're good. I can't hear you. I can read your lips, though. You can't hear... Don't... That's not funny. We did have mistakes earlier. No, we didn't. Hear, you can hear me, right? Yes, you can hear me. You're reacting to me. Clever. Clever. I like you. Um, and I as don't for, like myself. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. We're like, I don't like myself. You don't like yourself. Right. But as we're recording, it is a kind of sunny, maybe... Tuesday afternoon. In you know what? They were calling for snow this morning, uh, kind of, and it didn't happen around here, so it was a great morning. There was like a drop. of There were some raindrops. I had the dog outside, and there was some yeah. raindrops, but no snow. I they think were falling on my head. Some tomorrow night, maybe Thursday night, maybe this weekend into next week. I, I just I don't even know. I'm tired of it already. I hate winter. Why I live here, I'll never know. I do not know, but... Uh, I thought, since we are going into uh, NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day this Sunday, I thought we'd jump way back to uh, 2001, the very first WWE Vengeance pay-per-view, Vengeance 2001. Um, So if you're you're playing along at home, go to your award-winning WWE network, find Vengeance 2001, and go to the time mark, two hours, 20 minutes, and 10 seconds it's two hours 20 minutes uh and 10 seconds it is the very end of uh chris jericho and the rock and that leads into what will be the match we are covering on this one that is uh chris jericho and stone cold steve austin to unify the uh the wwe championship and the world heavyweight championship the wcw title so but um this event vengeance 2001 was from the uh was the first of seven in a row uh for vengeance uh starting in december of 2001 and then in 2002 it moved to july uh for two years uh one of them co-branded uh then 2003 it was a smackdown event um in 2004 it stayed in july as a raw event and then um 2005 2006 were raw events as well in june 2007 was vengeance night of champions then they paused the vengeance brand for a couple of years till 2011 it was revived in san antonio and then of course this year they're reviving it again 
this time as we've seen kind of the trend over the last year with the NXT brand. Uh, NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day this Sunday um, on the WWE Network. By the time everybody's hearing this, of course, we will all already given our predictions mm-hmm. for said show on Thursday night. But yeah, uh, December 9th, 2001. Again, two hours, 20 minutes, 10 seconds is your start time. We will uh, give you the cue when we are hitting play. And uh, I will have the audio um, of the of the match, and I'll, I'll pan it up at times too. So um, it, it drowns Ryan and Ryan and my uh, crowing out. But uh, December 9th, 2001. Uh, this is actually still under the WWF brand. I for, yeah, I guess uh, yeah. I forget when that uh, actually it switched over. Uh, San Diego Sports Arena in San Diego, California, eleven thousand eight hundred fans, a buy rate of three hundred and seven thousand uh, for this show. Uh, apparently, it was also the final WWF pay per view to on, air on Channel Four in the UK. Um, so yeah, of course, this was the night that it was the uh, the tournament bracket. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin had defeated uh, Kurt Angle to retain the WWF championship, as we will hear in a second. Uh, Chris Jericho will defeat The Rock um, to win the uh, the world championship, the big gold, uh, formerly the WCW championship. Uh, that match was 19 minutes and five seconds. The, the Stone Cold Angle match was 14.55. This match, of course, then will be Jericho putting his world title on the line against Austin's WWF title. The winner takes all for the unified uh, WWE uh, WWF championship to be the undisputed WWF championship and have uh, both belts. But just looking back at the event prior to uh, us hitting play here, Ryan, um, Mm -hmm. this was uh, when Sunday Night Heat uh, was the the kickoff show. Uh, The APA uh, defeated Billy and Chuck. Uh, on Sunday Night Heat. If you've um, not watched the APA doc, I know Mark, intern Mark, has said something about that in our group chat. I uh, just want to take a moment to put that over. That is a fantastic dude, little have, documentary. It's so real good. Stuff I need to I need to watch. It's that. I need to watch the uh, Bianca Belair Chronicle. Oh, real good. Um, I did watch the Icons, the Yokozuna one, when it aired after Royal Rumble. But apparently, oh, that was fantastic. But uh, there's also, um, I think they dropped a couple more Day of stuff. Um, uh, I think they're, I don't know if they dropped it already, but it, it's going to be dropping soon, the day of this year's Royal Rumble, um, which is amazing the turnaround time they have on these things. Uh, and then also, I think there was like an untold on like the AJ Styles debut date. Like, there's a lot of yeah, stuff yeah. that I just need to dig into uh, on the network. But then uh, for Vengeance itself, there was uh, six other matches besides these uh, these tournament matches. Uh, the show opened Albert and Scotty Tuhati defeating uh, Christian and Test uh, to open the show. Edge defeated William Regal to retain the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, Jeff Hardy defeated Matt Hardy uh, in a singles match where Lita was the uh, guest referee. The Dudley boys, Bubba Ray and Devon, um, with Stacey Keebler at this time, kind of forgot mm. that she was uh, with the Dudleys. They defeated uh, the Big Show and Kane to uh, retain their WWF tag team titles. The Undertaker defeated Rob Van Dam in a hardcore match. To win the hardcore championship, still hard to believe that uh, the Undertaker was once a hardcore champion. Um, and then uh, Trish Stratus defeated Jacqueline to retain the uh, women's championship in what was the shortest match of the night in three minutes and thirty four <sighs> seconds. Unreal. Yeah, just uh, it, it's crazy how how far we've come. Even when uh, they had two women in there that could absolutely work a match, and Jacqueline. And Trish, they gave them three some minutes. Yeah, and I don't think that was necessarily always the case when it came to the women's title. Like, I'm, I'm going to jump ahead here and see, like, at Royal Rumble uh, the next month if, uh... no, <laughs> at the Royal Rumble, Trish Stratus defeats uh, defeats Jazz with Jacqueline as the special guest referee, guest referee in. Three minutes and forty-three seconds. So they got nine more seconds. <laughs> and jazz, uh, jazz can go with just about anybody. Just yeah, really, just about. Oh anybody. man. Uh, then I moved to No Way Out. There wasn't even a women's match on that one. And I go to WrestleMania X Eight. There had to have been a women's match on this one. 
Um, oof. Ooh. <laughs> Jazz defeating uh, Trish Stratus and Lita in a triple threat match. Six minutes and 16 seconds. You add another woman, you double the time. Um, the <laughs> third shortest match of the night, fourth shortest match of the night, the shortest that one, well, the shortest that night came in on heat, but the shortest on the actual card was Maven versus Goldust in a hardcore match for the hardcore championship. Yeah. So yeah, maybe things weren't, uh, weren't, uh, you know, they, they, they were always very, very different. Yep. Ooh. Cause I even jumped ahead to backlash, uh, jazz defeating Trish Stratus by submission of 429. So yeah, that that's that sucks. My goodness. I thought maybe, maybe uh this was an I see you went you went to bat right away. You were bat. like, no well, way I, this is no, true. I, I just because like I know like when we got into the divas era, you defend your turf, divas, that's fine. Like when we got into the divas era, obviously it, it it got you're right. Obviously, the matches were a little longer because uh they had to strip down to their bra and panties <laughs> to have and that takes time. I that get does. it. That does. That well, takes I time. Mean, depending, depending what they're wearing, it takes some time. Right, so right. Anywhere those evening gowns are not easy to pull off. Uh no, I well, I mean, I don't know. I've never worn an evening gown, so I can't I can't speak Okay. To, <laughs> uh, to speak to whether or not I knew you in college. <laughs> Um, so and again, I didn't wear hours. a duct tape thong. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Uh, two hours, 20 minutes and 10 seconds is the time. Like I said, we'll, we'll see the, uh, the closing minutes here, uh, to the, to the match between, uh, the rock and Chris Jericho, uh, in which Jericho wins, uh, the rocks world championship. And then, uh, and then we will go into the main event, which is Chris Jericho versus stone cold Steve Austin. So I'll give us a countdown here in three Two, one, we go. It has been done here. The Rock holding his legs. They can get the wall. There it is. There it is. Good small package. Like we saw. Did you watch Raw last night, Ryan? No. I'll watch it before the before the show though on Thursday. Okay. I don't know if we're gonna necessarily cover anything besides Nia's hole, but um, Naomi had a great small package to defeat. Um, Shayna Baszler last night. Oh, okay. Uh, on Raw, which you don't see a lot of them. Okay, so th so this is of course in the era where we have custom stages for every single show. Such a great oh, look at Vince. What a heel! Well, he didn't. I mean, at least he didn't blow out his quads this time. No, he seemed real, real gingerly coming down to the ring. Well, I think the I think the quad one was was the next month then at, at, at two thousand two. Rock always did a great working punch, you know? Spine buster. Well, whose elbow pad's on the ground? If... Maybe I was. Maybe Jericho had one or something. Do you think there was ever fights in the crowd over the, oh, I'm over the sure. elbow pad? I can guarantee you no small children ever got them. No, yeah, certainly not. There's all these dorks and Tupperware uh, collections had to uh, make sure they got theirs. Oh, good low blow. Solid finish. Oh. Beat him with his own move. Earl Hebner had one of the best slow counts. For, for drama. Say what you want. I think Hebner was a fantastic referee. Oh, he was. Absolutely was. But like when, when if he was if he was tired or beat up or whatever, I think he had one of the best. Oh, so we go right into it. Right, and again, earlier this night, we saw Austin beat Kurt Angle to get to this point. So he's beaten up as well. Hey, you see him kind of limping in here. Uh, I think that's just his knees. Well, yeah, it certainly he wasn't be. selling at this point. Wait, what? I got to work twice? What? You want me to go out there? You want to go out there, get tired, and come back and do it again? What? I can imagine that conversation had to go pretty well. I don't think Austin was uh, as, as fun-loving as he is now back in these days. Bell hasn't rung yet. Oh, those, those, the chair headshot. I know he got his hands up, but that still do not age well. See, getting those hands up, I mean, takes takes away a bit of that feeling for me. 
And I feel like Austin was always pretty decent at getting his hands up. I mean, maybe that's why he can make coherent sentences still to this day. Maybe, maybe. And I liked Kurt Angle at this at this time because he was rocking the uh, the wingtip boots. All right, so now we're both on an equal playing field. It's amazing, dude. How, like, the Rock. I was obviously in great shape back then, but like, to see Rock now versus then, it's like night and day. The dude is like is like two rocks. Definitely smart to ring the bell now while both competitors are just down. <laughs> I would have loved for this. You should ring that bell. Yes, that makes sense. And it, I would. What, what would have happened? I guess you could have just played it into Royal Rumble for a Fatal Four Way or something. But could you imagine, like, oh my it, god, could you imagine the fans if that's what they did? If they just double ten, <laughs> I would love for them to do that now. Like, unify the WWE and Universal titles, do this angle, and then actually do the double ten count, and just leave and no just stop counting. Just leave no champions at the end of the night. I, I want that to happen. Oh, I said kicked out. So in case you forgot what Chris Jericho and Shape looked like, here we are. <laughs> I kind of forgot WWE used black rope tape for it for a time. Back then, the ropes, I mean, visually, it's kind of a cool look because they kind of do get hidden. Yes, with the crowd for sure. Is there is there a rope color? This is obviously such a weird question that only I would ask. Red, white, very, and blue. red white, and blue. Yeah, Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely, just a classic it, look. And I wish they would do that now when on pay per views because they right, do Raw and SmackDown because you have Raw and SmackDown together. So, oh, what did he say? They bleeped him. Um. There goes his First Amendment rights. <laughs> but yeah, I, I wish they would do that now for uh, for pay per view. I really do. It just doesn't it would... uh, NXT use black, or are they yellow? I think they're yellow, and then for takeovers, I think they switch to white because I feel like takeover the takeover logo has been white. Okay, but I could be wrong. And is 205 Live still doing purple? Ryan, I, I wish I could tell you the last time I watched 205 Live. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Oof. That was almost a that was almost a bad bump with the with a monitor and a fan cover sitting down there on the floor. Ooh. Well now we know why Jericho's chest is caved in. <laughs> Security guys, like guys, get back! Come on, man, get back! It looks like if you—I'm you, sure you've seen the like the GIF of like the security guy into a stadium that's like barely even patting people down. That's what this guy's looking like. Like, hey, just come on, get back! Three count, Jer or Jr. I'll be expecting royalties off that. Yeah, I touched Austin. All right. I touched him. I'm never going to wash his hand again. I never washed him before. Ooh. And that's how COVID started. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's funny, like, now to go back and watch, like, older shows and see, because we've gotten so used to the, the turnbuckle post being covered with the LED boards and the LED ring aprons and like all of the things that we're used to now. Now you just see like a regular ring post and it's like, oh, that looks tiny. Right, right. Like visually, it's just, it, it's such a different product. Yeah, we'll go back to watching indie wrestling, which what, what they're 16 by 16 rings, usually smaller rings to begin with. Yeah. Uh, the poor Spanish announce table. Is that a middle finger, foam finger, uh, there in the front row? When they, they it's this camera view. Yeah, sure is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how many? Uh, how many kids under ten 
in this country had a middle finger foam finger because of the World Wrestling Federation. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> yeah, right. Like the time I was at the Hershey show and a mom was yelling at the kid. It's like seven-year-old kid because he wasn't giving the finger when Austin came out. I was like, <laughs> yes. That didn't feel great when I was 16. Now at 35, I'm looking back on that going, uh-huh, that's that's not great. Well, that was on the padding, right? Okay. The double padding what? definitely sell the yeah, back. Come on. Come on, Jericho. <laughs> Imagine that's flat today. Oof. Man, this this era, like JR, just told such great stories. Oh. Everything he did was passionate, too. It sounded passionate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Definitely within his grasp. Match can only be one in the ring. It's not a hard four match. Oh, oh, oh. Austin. Jericho sidestepped Austin, who had the full head of steam. And Austin. You know, and obviously. Do you see that move anymore other than Goldberg? Um, Running through the. I just don't no, remember no, seeing I, it I, very I, often. I feel like we saw it with, with Lashley like this this fall. Um, okay, okay, yeah. You know, because he uses a spear. Um, but yeah, that's you know, it's so, sometimes some of these like the little things kind of get get lost anymore. But yeah, I mean, talking about like that era of, of commentators with with, with Jr. And, and and the King, you know, everybody, you know, you can obviously find fault in the King from a from a personal standpoint, obviously, but from from a commentary team, I mean, just really one of the best. Of all time, I mean, my my personal favorite is Gorilla and Bobby, but but Jr. and King are are absolutely right up there. Fun match. I mean, you know, you spent a lot of time on the outside, and you know, now you're probably working your way towards. You, you know, I'm assuming imagine. this match was was no DQ or no count out. Um, it doesn't. Say here, but I, I would I would imagine because like why would you Hamner wasn't counting? Well, that's true, but I feel like you know this was still attitude era ish. I don't know how much that's rules fair. came into play <laughs> um, on this one. Yeah, it doesn't say anywhere. Enough for that, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't say anywhere on the on the Wikipedia page or, or even in the, like the notes about the main event. But I would imagine that they, you know, probably didn't want to do any any sort of a DQ or something like that. Solid suplex. Turnbuckle pads were like velvety. It looks like. Buried into his gut. I, need to yeah, I don't even remember those turnbuckle pads. They look like the old style, like the blue ones. Yeah. They do look velvety, like they were made with, uh, I don't know. Can he turn him? Can he turn him? But I need to listen really... to our stuff. Whenever whenever things get back and, and we actually, I actually get to call wrestling again and Use some of JR verbiage from like this era. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, this is a Boston crab. Yes, yes, this, this is a Boston is, crab. This is not the walls of Jericho. I feel like the walls, if Michael Cole was calling it, <laughs> the walls, the walls. I feel like once he got to WWE, he it, it went pretty much full Boston crab from then on. And I don't know if it's because like. They had a couple of guys like Austin that had neck injuries, and obviously you couldn't stack Austin on his neck for the move, right? You know, you, you didn't want to do that, so it just kind of evolved. But I don't feel but like even the Rock match had had him in this move because I watched the match before before we went on air, um, and had him in the walls of Jericho, which again, just the Boston Crab. Yeah, yeah, it definitely changed, and uh, yeah, like I said, I don't know if that was a conscious effort or that was. Um, Jericho just predict all oh, the good, great referee Ooh. bump. Damn, Hebner felt that for a week. Sure did, but like, 
I don't know if, like, if Jericho was just preempting his uh, future out of shapeness and just got lazy or what. I don't know. Jesus. Oh, oh bad stunner. This is a bad low you can blow. Tell Austin, Austin didn't take many stunners no, on those no. knees, you can tell. Yeah I, guess, yeah, I guess that is a move that's all knee. Uh, dirty referee time. Is it Tim White? Nick I don't know who that guy is. Oh, Nick Patrick. Boom! But damn Nick Patrick. <laughs> I love it. God, just gimmick the fuck out of this, huh? Oh, I'm sure Rick's going to bleed for that. Oh, yeah. I would imagine he's cutting right now. Whoever I mean, reached down and touched him. I mean, is it a Ric Flair uh, appearance if he doesn't bleed in this era? Great, which is great. This is so good. Oh, the old Fez press. One more time. Off the net. You can feel the moment. Fez press, double elbows. I mean, like, we, we talked about moveset last week on the show. And I feel like, for the most part, I mean, Austin was a guy. I mean, he was a traditional wrestler, and then he had. You know, a handful of favorites, and that was about it. Right. It, now, this is closer to a wall, but there he, now he sits into it. And that's a Boston Crab. I like the guy in the orange shirt in the front with, like, the bleach blonde up on top. Right there. Now, that looks like the walls of Jericho. That's a little more wallsy. Right. On Stack him on his neck, on his shoulder. Oh, here comes Booker. Booker. Yeah. Ooh. So we've had Angle, Rock, McMahon, Nick Patrick, Ric Flair, Booker T. But people are going to say that WWE overbooks the shit out of things now. Today, right. Which, again, goes back to my point that I've always said. Everything they're doing now, they've done before. Like, it's it's wrestling. Like, it's it's what it is, man. Like It is. Like, we can't act like they didn't overbook the shit out of things. Here we go. Great slow count. It's fantastic. Boy, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I mean, I guess that belt shot really did it. Look at that quaff on McMahon. For the love of God, I cannot believe this. Look at Mr. McMahon. He's laughing now. He's laughing loud. He's laughing loud. He said he was going to be the last laugher he is. So, again, like so it's, it's the big gold and the big eagle, correct? Yes. At this time? Okay. And, like, obviously two different gold platings because the, the big gold looked better, in my opinion, at this point than, than the big eagle. I agree. But it wasn't long after this. I think it was after WrestleMania that uh, that they changed them then. Once Triple H was Jericho. They had both belts for a bit, correct? Yeah, Jericho Jericho's run up to uh, that, So that this is the show where the Vince laughing gif comes from. Oh wow. There yeah, it was. was. Yeah, I just saw that. But yeah, so Jericho carried the, the two belts. Up through WrestleMania, Triple H won him, and then a week or two later, um, I want to see when they see if it says when they unveiled that one. I'm gonna try pull it up here on. Now that's that's about you. It had correct. You had the undisputed championship replica. I did. I did. Yeah. Um, Bummer. We don't get to see if Ric Flair cut himself or not. That's a shame. I mean, I'm sure he did. I'm absolutely sure he did. So I mean, had anywhere near a ring post, I'm sure no. Flair was busted open. 
I mean, I, he probably just did it for fun at that point. <laughs> okay, so after Chris Jericho unified the WWF and WCW championships into the unified undisputed WWF championship, uh, the two belts were used until a single undisputed championship belt was introduced to champion Triple H uh, on the April 1st uh, episode of Raw. Um, the belt, new belt was designed by New York based had two artists, Keith Chiara Mello, uh, taking inspiration from WCW. This name included a nameplate. Um, and like the previous two designs, uh, it had an eagle atop the globe. Um, and then that one eventually was made into a, had a bigger, um, a bigger version was made for Brock Lesnar. Uh, cause one, cause the first, the first one had a 10 inch plate and then, um, it went to a 12 once Lesnar got it. Cause the 10 inch plate looked way too small. Um, that makes sense on Brock. So let's see here. WrestleMania. Okay. So it was a couple of weeks after cause WrestleMania 18 when triple H won, uh, the titles, uh, was March 17th. And then it, the new one wasn't unveiled until April the 1st. So triple H was even going double belt there, um, for a couple of weeks, but okay. But yeah, that was a that was a championship match that got dramatically overshadowed, sure. uh, of course, by uh, the the Rock and Hogan um, uh, on yep. that one, for sure. So yeah, the very first Vengeance main event. It's I'm exciting. sure I've seen that. I probably had seen it. I don't know how many shows I was seeing live back in high school, um, but I know I hadn't seen it in a really long time. And yeah, right when. Uh, jokingly because because I, I i truly i was just like well let's just do the main event of the first vengeance and i wasn't going to look even even to what it was until we like sat down to record and then tim blew up the whole thing in our uh in our group message um no and, damn you tim and once he said that i was like oh, okay like once i, I think i, I obviously would have realized what it was uh when um you know when it uh when it came to be but um Fun little match, like I said. Sure was. Gimmicked, uh, gimmick like a motherfucker, but I'm pretty sure that was just the WWE in the late 90s and early 2000s. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to see some gimmicks tomorrow night uh, on NXT Vengeance Day from the first to the most current. Uh, you know, we're going to see both of the conclusions, Jim, of the Dusty Rhodes Classic, the men's and the ladies. We the are. NXT Women's Championship match is a three-way match, so I'm sure that's going to have what some might call uh, some gaga in it. Um, Tony Storm, Mercedes Martinez, Io Shirai. Uh, there's a street fight, because why wouldn't there be in an NXT show uh, for the right. North American Championship match? Gargano and Kushida, that should be just a hoot. And then, uh, obviously, uh, Pete Dunne, in Balor for the NXT Championship match. Uh, that's going to be a really good show. I can't wait uh, to to see it tomorrow. I know we talked about it on Thursday. Jim, any any changes to your picks? Anything you want to update? No, I think now I'm gonna, that we're one day away. I think I'm going to stick with uh, with what I went with on Thursday. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to reiterate what I said on on Thursday in that. I feel like it's a bum. I feel like this is the second street fight for the North American title in the past year. I feel like that's a kind of a bummer because I think that's a title that could very much be like a a wrestler's title, a worker's title. Yeah, uh, yeah. And they've done the street fight thing a couple of times. Like I give it, I give uh, AEW shit for going going to Wells uh, a few too many times. Uh, I'm I'm sure. I mean, it's hard to remember two days ago on Thursday, but. I'm sure I'm going to probably give AEW shit for uh, just wheeling out Sting for another interview with Tony Schiavone. Yeah, uh, probably will. Yeah. Night, but um, but I'll give NXT shit as well. Like um, you know, this is you're going back to that street fight well um, a few times, and and I get you're you know we're we're doing what we can, and um, there, there's been quite a quite a battle now. <laughs> Why? Why do they? I mean, this is on Wikipedia, but why do they have Kushida listed as Kush? You know what? Why? Why wouldn't you? But it's not. But maybe this is just somebody being goofy because it doesn't. Like, if you click on his name, it doesn't take you to like Kushida. 
Correct. So maybe somebody just edited it because obviously Wikipedia, you could do that sort of a thing. That's why you have to trust everything you see on Wikipedia. And well, I, I mean everything. 100% of everything. Got to trust it all. Um, but uh, Ryan, any other any other thoughts from this match? or uh... No, now we saw how the uh, championships were unified um, under great unification and uh what what a fun match what a what a great way to spend a half an hour with you uh we again we hope you enjoy vengeance day tomorrow um yeah. we yeah. hope you enjoyed watching this with us on a, on a saturday because let's face it what else is there to do for a half an hour what what else would you be doing on a football's saturday over. right football's over so you might as well Done. spend half an hour with your favorite wrestling podcast of course you can Follow him at RYN Eagle. Follow me at Big Jim Sports. But make sure you're following along with the show at Three Count Thursday, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, everything's up on the uh, the video page here. Uh, Whatamover.net. We dropped the new I'm a Sausage Guy shirt uh, and uh, our Colin Elbow brand deal and much more. Guys, uh, thanks again for tuning in with us. And uh, enjoy the Vengeance Day tomorrow night. Uh, on the award-winning WWE Network. Until next Thursday, we will talk to you then. Stay safe, stay smart, and go for the pin. Three Count Thursday is sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to the website, arenaeats.app. That's arenaeats.app for the ultimate fan experience. At your favorite sports venue, Arena Eats mobile app, pre-order, express pickup, and in-seat delivery. How do you place your order?